just wondering what kind of relationship, if any, do you have with Aaron Boone going into this job and how well do you guys know each other? Uh, thanks, Gary. Um, I've known Booney mostly from playing against him. We were both in the National League Central for years. He was with Cincinnati and I was with Houston. Uh, but we've kind of got uh, a similar friend group uh, where we know a lot of the same people. And of course, uh, we've been across the diamond from each other uh, in a uh, staff position as well. Um, he did come to a Christmas party that I had one time years ago, him and his wife. Um, so I do know him. I, I wouldn't say that Booney and I have stayed in regular touch, but we've, uh, we've always been friends across the field. Hey, Brad, congrats. Uh, Brian Hoke with MLB.com. Uh, what do you like about this opportunity? You've obviously managed in the big league. So, uh, what do you like uh, or enjoy about the idea of being a bench coach here? Well, I, you know, I did do the bench coach job in Oakland with, with Mark Kotze, um, so I have done that before. And uh, this past summer, I didn't do anything. I got a little bit bored, to be honest with you. I, I enjoy the game. I enjoy the strategy. I enjoy the people. And uh, there's no grander stage in New York City. You know, I, I I started with the Yankees when they drafted me out of high school. I had uh, never been back since the expansion draft in 93. And, and you know, they're, uh, they're always looking to win a World Series. I've never won a World Series. So, uh that tied in with the fact that I, I do know Booney to some degree. Uh, just It just seemed like a great fit and a great opportunity. From the outside looking in, what do you think of this Yankees team? You know, they're a very talented team. There was some injury issues last year, and there were some guys coming back from injury that didn't get quite full, full back up to speed uh, in terms of uh, health. Um, but like I said, uh, between uh, this uh, ha uh, Hal and – and Cash and Booney, and it's the Yankees. I mean, every single year they're going to try and win the World Series, and uh, that can't be said about every organization. Uh, and I want to, I want to be part of a World Series team. Hey, Brad, congratulations on the job, Jack Curry from the Yes Network. I was wondering if you could describe the anatomy of, of how this marriage came to be. Who reached out to you? What were those conversations like, and what made it get to the point that it got to? Uh, both both Cash and Booney reached out to me, uh, I guess it was a few weeks ago now, but uh, they both reached out. Uh, Cash had texted me, uh, kind of gauging my interest, and then Booney called me uh, to talk one-on-one -on -one about it a little bit more in depth. And that was prior to any interview process. So uh, that's where it began. And then you've, as you said, served both roles, a bench coach and a managerial role. What are the best attributes that a bench coach can have to facilitate the manager? The bench coach has to make sure the manager is prepared. He's got to make sure he's prepared, whether it's pregame uh, or in game. Obviously, there's some uh, some smaller roles in between, but the main aspect of a bench coach's job is to make sure that the manager has all the information that he needs to make a decision, and if necessary. Um, maybe push him towards uh, one decision or another or try to coax him in one direction or another um, if I feel strongly about it. What did you learn from both managing and bench coach about how the manager and bench coach roles are the same and how are they are different? I think they're the same in the sense that you're still strategizing the same way in-game. Um, on the periphery, you know, it's probably a, the, the manager has a little bit more on his plate, certainly in New York City, attending to the media. Um, and the bench coach is a little more free to kind of interact with the players, engage with the players. You know, you're not the point man. You're not the guy in charge. So uh, it's easier to build relationships with players. There's more camaraderie, although I know Booney's done a very good job of doing that as a manager. I found it easier as a bench coach in Oakland to interact with the players on a personal level. Um, and that was actually one part of the job I really, really enjoyed because I, if you don't like players in this game, you probably shouldn't be in it. And uh, that, that was something that I, I really enjoyed. There's been a lot of talk around here about balancing analytical data with more traditional uh, baseball teaching. I guess, I guess it's a big question, but where do you come down on that? And, and do you see yourself as a, as a communicator in that area? Uh, 
I'd say I, I think both are very important. I think they're important to putting together a team. They're important to making decisions in a team. Um, you know, data can – truth is, a lot of the data is extremely valuable, but so is experience. Um, I put a lot of stock in decision-making – that is based on data. I did this goes back to me being a catcher. I used to do the sky reports in Houston for for almost a decade and it was based on data and then I would put it into play in the game and I found that the data was probably right 85%, but you have to use your eyes as well. Um it's 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 not a vacuum out there. Um you have to use your eyes you, and you have to use your experience. So I put a lot of uh, emphasis on data, but it is it is not the entire answer to winning baseball games. Speaking of catching, you know, how, how much of a look have you gotten at Austin Wells so far? And what have you seen from him primarily behind the plate? I had I haven't seen him much. I saw him at the very end of the year. Uh, so I, I don't really want to jump the gun and and and, and speak to that. Uh, you know, I really like to get a look at him in, in spring training and just see him behind the plate, see him uh, beside the plate and then make a judgment when I have a little more information. Um, I'm wondering if there was something about the Yankees interview process that stood out to you, the things they em- emphasized, the things they asked you about that really like stood out in your mind that, that looked like it'll, um, you know, be one of your primary job responsibilities or something that you're going to have to consider every day. Just put something that jumped out to you during this process. Well, I mean, I've only done two bench coach interviews, one with Oakland and one with the Yankees. Um, you know, both of them involve zoom interviews, um, they were both extensive, both, you know, I wouldn't put them in the managerial extensive category, but they were both extensive. I think uh, both teams wanted to make sure that their candidates had an understanding of what happens in the dugout and how decisions are made. And if if my thought process matched with the New York Yankees and Aaron Boone's thought process. And in what ways do you find that your thought process matches with Aaron Boone's and the New York Yankees? Uh, I, you know, I think that's actually a better question for them. Uh, they offered, you know, they, they obviously offered me the job. So I think the question should be asked them is what, why Brad Osmus uh, more than me? Cause I don't know what fully what their thought process is. I might know, you know, a year from now, but right now I, I going into the interview process, I obviously didn't. Brad, you, you've, you know, had a long major league career. Just who are some of the bench coaches that stood out to you and what can you take from them and kind of apply to this job or maybe did apply when you were with Oakland? Uh, you know, it's funny. I actually would say in my managerial career, I, I probably that experience gave me more value information than as a, than as a player, as a player, um, you know, the bench coach is there, but you, you're not, you're not necessarily, not necessarily focusing on what the bench coach is doing. Um, in Detroit, I had Gene Lamont who, had a wealth of experience in baseball and I was a first time manager with no coaching experience. And I leaned heavily on him in that regard because he did have the in-game experience to, uh, to lend to me. When I was in Anaheim, I had Josh Paul who had no big league managing experience, but it was extremely organized, which also is a, a, an important asset for a, for a bench coach to be organized for the manager and the rest of the staff. I think it's got to fall somewhere in the in the middle. Um, you you got to be organized, but I do believe, I firmly believe that having someone sitting next to you as a manager in the dugout that's been in that same seat and understands what it involves uh, is a huge asset. Not so much even during the game, but after the game when you're talking th- talking things through, or before the game when you're when you're game planning for uh, for that night's uh, contest. So it, it's. I just think having someone with the experience, having sat in that seat is invaluable. And just to follow up, you've been a bench coach, a manager, you've been in front offices and linked to front office jobs long-term. Do you see yourself staying in the dugout or moving to a front office? And do you want to manage again? Uh, I don't know where it's going to take me. You know, I didn't, uh, you know, when I was managing, I didn't imagine being a bench coach. Um, You know, there was some – a little bit of interest in front office roles, but uh, most of the time I, when I look at myself, I look at myself in uniform just because that's what I've always been. I've been a player, I've been a manager, I've been a coach. Um, right now I'm the bench coach for the Yankees. So that's all I'm concerned with. You've managed against Aaron Boone. How do you 
I don't want to say judge, but what stands out to you about Aaron Judge, Aaron Judge, Aaron Boone as a manager? Um, you know, it's funny. I don't really judge the manager across the way unless unless they do something that I don't understand. Uh, that's when I when I'll go. I, you know, I might look at my bench coach and say, "Why do you think he's doing that?" Uh, and nothing ever stood out with Aaron. He never made a move where you went, "Well, that didn't make sense," or you know, "Why is he doing that?" Um, it's kind of that if he doesn't do anything out of the ordinary, you don't really notice him, you know, kind of like an umpire. Like if an umpire calls a great game behind the plate, you don't really notice him. Um, so Aaron never did anything that made me kind of wrinkle my brow, so to speak. So I, I and that's how I would judge other managers if they made me wrinkle my brow. Brad, you said something interesting a couple of minutes ago that actually reminded me of uh, what Gene Stick Michael used to say. And ironically enough, he's, part of how your career moved in a different direction because he was the GM at the time of that expansion draft. You said 85% of the information you believe is potentially accurate, but you have to trust your eyes. Stick used to say that all the time. How do you, how do you navigate that? How, how do you know when your eyes are telling you exactly what you need to see as opposed to that information that might be on a sheet of paper? Well, you're, you're leaning on experience. So you know, I, you, I have, in my case, I have 18 years behind home plate, five years as a manager, a year as a bench coach, and I'm leaning on my experience to help me determine whether what I'm seeing with my eyes is, is real or not. Is it going to be wrong? Absolutely. It's going to be wrong sometimes. Um, but you hope your experience points you in the right direction a little bit more than 85% of the time. How much did that topic come up when you interviewed with uh... – Boone and Cash, did you talk about using your eyes as well as using the information that's provided? Yeah, we we discussed a lot of what we're discussing now. I, I talked about uh, what I did as a catcher in terms of using data. I talked about what I did as a manager in terms of using data. Um, and I talked about using my eyes, um, especially as a catcher, because I had 18 years as opposed to five years of managing. Um, but that was a, a big part of the discussion. You've been in the other dugout as a player and a manager against the Yankees quite often over these several decades. I'm just curious, what has stood out when they've been at their best? What brand of baseball do you hope that you can help this Yankees team uh, bring to the field in 2024? In the recent past, I guess, you're worried about the long ball more than anything. These guys can slug. They can hit the ball out of the park. They can drive runs in. Uh, and actually, for for power, for big power-hitting type players, they're very athletic. Um, even a guy like Aaron Judge at his size is stealing bases. So um, you're trying to stay away from the home run, truthfully. You're trying to stay away from the long ball. Um, they obviously had pitching as well, and their bullpen is very strong. When I was in Detroit, their bullpen was very strong when I was managing uh, in Detroit from 14 to – 17.